What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, aunties, uncles, and lighties of all ages. Uh, today is a special day. Why is a it very, a special day? Very, very, very special day. I must say myself. What are we doing, Anu? Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tika on Lockdown Season 2. We're back for our second season. And, uh... We've got a special, special surprise for you today. Yes, uh, before we get into the entertaining stuff, uh, just uh, something serious really quickly. Um, uh, this whole Black Lives Matter fight has been going so well recently. Like Some of our peers in school uh, did a little protest, um, took some pictures and everything. And just worldwide, it's been crazy. So we're going to put um, uh, some the link to some petitions and um just to continue the support because we shouldn't let up in this fight uh anyways here we go duran das can you give us an introduction yeah Yeah, sure sure so today as anwar said we have a special surprise for you our very first guest to season two um, Mr. Rashil Jaglar, commonly known as Osivan from the hit movie Keeping Up with the Kind of Songs. Yeah, I know yes, many sir. of you might know him. So, here we go. We're just That's waiting crazy. for him to join. We're just waiting Hello. for him to be here. And there he is. And there, and there he is. He... Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, yes. welcome, yeah, we... welcome. Ah, thank you very much. Nice to be on board with this podcast. How are you all doing during this lockdown? Um, well, thanks, and you? Oh, we've been great. Fine. Oh, okay, good. Uh, well, I've just been busy with some NPO work. So uh, I just came back busy from the NPO work. At least that's keeping me busy, you know. I need to help those yeah. who need. Oh, that's yeah, that's great. That, that's amazing. Because... Most of us have been going back to school since matric is going on. And uh, yeah, well, I've yeah. been at home because I'm staying at home because my parents want me to stay at home. But I've been doing <laughs> online school. So it's been going kind of well so far. So yeah. That's wonderful. As long as you're keeping up with the studies. I mean, you don't want to waste one year of your life uh, repeating a grade. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what is it that you oh, like yeah. to talk? Oh, for um, my first question was, so, um, like, so, so, like, obviously, you're, like, most commonly known from the Kandis armies and everything, and yeah. I just, like, I find it really, really fascinating, like, the way you, in the movie, you, you didn't say anything, but you use your, like, facial expressions and your, like, movement to create, like, a comedy and like my dad once compared it to like Rowan Atkinson you know, like Mr. Bean so it's like I w- was wondering who were who were your inspirations like to pursue acting okay so um, you know quite frankly uh, everybody says I am the Indian Mr. Bean uh, but uh, <laughs> it's I just take it by as it goes by if people want to take Asavan as the Indian Mr. Bean then that's them uh, that's them uh, Asavan but uh, for me, Asavan is just a separate character from Mr. Bean because, like, um, <clears throat> I'm sure you'll agree, Rowan Atkinson has his own brand of Mr. Bean. Yes, fine, I may look like yeah. him and I may in some much way act like him, but I'm not him because I'm a totally different person. Nobody knows much about me. All they know is I'm this DJ who comes and does these funny moves, everything. I'm a completely different person yeah. from Mr. Bean. Nobody ever knows anything about Asavan. Who is he? Where does he come from? Nobody ever knows. He's a type of mysterious character with Mr. Mr. Bean, excuse me, we all know he is like some alien from some dimension. Like we see in the beginning, he falls out like an alien falls out from a spaceship. So uh, that's how Mr. Bean is. As for inspiration, so um, as I grew up, I used to watch a lot of Bollywood and Hollywood movies. I never had any ambition up until the age of 12 to say I would like to become this or I'd like to become that. I just used to like love things a lot and say maybe I'll become this, maybe I'll become that. But after 13, as I started to mature in my life, 
I always feel 13 was a defining moment because I matured in my life in the sense that I started realizing that I have ambitions and those ambitions are to act and are also to write stories. Acting because um mm. it's just like something that just came came about in me just so my inner self told me you just need to be an actor and I said if that's in my suggestion then so be it. So then I used to take part in a lot of school plays and yeah I used to also do drama in high school. So that's where my true passion right. for acting came from. Ah, that's right. Oh, speaking of uh, the like, we I I saw that you did um, drama in high school from your YouTube video, but your second yeah. last YouTube video um, was um, opening the ABBA CD set. Yes, yes, and yes. Just, yeah, I thought that was really cool because it gave it kind of gave me like flashbacks, to, like because. Myself and Anwar went to the same primary school and in grade 7 we had this art teacher she was a lovely teacher um but mm, every she single was. lesson she um we she give us work and we sit and do it and she play Abba's greatest hits from track 1 <laughs> all the way and in every single lesson we just sit there and sing along and it was it was great yeah and it just made me nostalgic yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful to know. So my love for Abba came if you'd like to know. Um yeah. in 2009 it was my friend and I we were playing SingStar Abba, you know like PlayStation karaoke type of thing. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, that. yes. So we were playing that and then for some reason I just like saw them and I just said this is my group. This is really really my group Abba. So I became the very big fan from that moment. It was just something that caught caught on to me for some reason. So I got the yeah, entire collection of works. Yeah. I got their CDs. I got their DVDs. It's like one whole flash. Yeah, that's that's because really yeah. I feel for us when we were like young, we weren't really introduced to bands because there weren't really a lot of bands uh, that made like old school music. So for us, mm-hmm. when the our art teacher played for us, Abba, we're like, "Whoa, this sounds way different to the music we listen to." So we got into Abba. We got into Queen. and then we had band to do like band. all all those projects like with your <laughs> favorite band and so yeah it was really nice cuz then we got in touch with our our parents type of music what they listen to so cuz i feel like nowadays music is completely different to what it used to be oh true definitely, yeah. definitely true and also um with regards to queen um the only person who made me in somewhat of a way at least as few percentage of a queen fan was R- rami malik the way he played Freddie Mercury and Bohemian Rhapsody oh, yeah. yes. that movie was that was yeah. it was a great movie i can't lie his acting was on he looked exactly yeah, he, like Freddie Mercury and his voice and his he was, was, was just perfect <laughs> definitely he was born to play that role yeah. and i don't know whether he is Freddie Mercury in carnage or something but that that yeah. boy he he had the challenge Seems in him like and it. i i totally told myself if Rami did not get that Oscar. I don't know how. I'll just try something, some black magic or something. I'll just go over there, write yeah. to America, and personally <laughs> give him that award because he deserved it. I mean, he played yeah. the part well. He did his work, and that was it. And the Queen members, the band members themselves, said they actually forgot that was Rami on the screen. They actually thought it was actually Freddie right there, and they were thinking, "Oh, wow, Freddie, you did so amazing." <laughs> yeah, I can imagine because I saw their YouTube channel. They they now do music with Adam Lambert and stuff like since Fred is not there obviously, and they they did the whole reaction to the movie and they're like, I I couldn't believe that that was a different person. It looked exactly how Freddy would be, how he would act and everything, and they were just amazed by it. And it just shows if he didn't get that Oscar, I also would have like, I would have gone on an internet rant because he really deserved that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, is there any more questions? Um I have a question what like um so we see like you're not just an actor and a writer like you're also some other social media influencer right and we've well I've seen uh like a couple of collaborations like with the Shane Nike and uh Prev Ready so I just wanted to ask like what was your favorite or not favorite like the most fun collaboration you done Hey, that's a little bit hard to say. I loved interviewing Tesh Nika. I loved that collab. Mm. Uh Prev Ready is when I first did the video, it was it was a lot of fun no lies, but I felt sometimes I, yeah. I I just looked at myself over there and I was telling my friends, 
Did I act like an idiot there? Because I was like, <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm not a junk card person. It I don't really drink funny. alcohol. And that's the thing. People really loved it. People said they loved me and Trevor at this video and they were looking forward to more collabs. Yeah. And I was telling Trevor, you know what? I thought I was a dumb idiot doing something stupid there. But for some reason, people thought, you know what? Hey, this guy was so funny in the video. It's not a, it's like unreal. Yeah, it was really fun. I thought it was really... That was actually the first time I heard your voice um, <laughs> when I watched that video. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, and just relating to that topic, um, both both Dish and Prev have their own characters. So, mm. this is a top-level question. Um, yeah. Auntie Sheila versus Auntie Shamila. Who who wins in a fight? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like choosing between both in the sense that both of them have got their own brands. Both of them have their own way of portraying comedy to the people, and depending on what the audience like, then that's what they suited for. But um, to be honest with you, when it comes to social media branding and stuff, like with me, I'm an actor. I just love sticking to acting, like you know, being trained to portray a certain character. And yes, people say out there I must use the memeing and whatever I have to like maybe make a brand for myself through how Prev and Tesh have done. And I do so in some much way agree with them. But at the same time, you know, um, as an actor, it's just like that kind of thing, like where you feel within yourself right now. Do you think it will be appropriate to do this for your brand as an actor, or do you think it will be appropriate for you to actually go for auditions, get the part, and then? portray yourself in such a way that people see you in like different character and a different light for you to act. So um oh, yeah. with regard to the first the Tesh and the Prev, I'm not going to necessarily say who is the better or who is the down. It's not my like type of way to put things right now with regard to that matter, but all I can say is both of them are doing good work. They, the audiences love them and um None, both of them, there's nobody been saying that Auntie Shamila is better or Auntie Sheila is better. Both have been on the same level of comedic lines. And as for me, like um, as an actor, I have thought about doing something like Auntie Shamila or Auntie Sheila. But I just said to myself, um, I love acting. It's my true passion embedded in me. There's very, very few people who have actually seen me portray a certain character. Very few people. And um, but out of those few people, the re- reviews you can get from them will be amazing in the sense that they've seen, compared to what they saw on the screen and compared to what they see in reality, they are amazed by it. And I'm very very happy, and I live by that encouragement, and that's what makes me go forward in my career as an actor. I've been for twenty twenty three auditions, and only five auditions I could get. That's how tough the industry can be at certain times. Mm-hmm. Wow, so, that's. It's crazy. Yes, yeah, the industry is difficult for anybody. Because if you look at uh, Mishka Parthipal, if you watch some of her interviews, she's uh, spoken about how many, like 60, 65 auditions she could have went to, and only maybe 15 to 10 she could have get through. And you would assume maybe she'll get every single audition. So it's a yeah, tough world in the industry. Think... Even Prev Reddy himself, even if you watch some of his videos too, he's even spoken out, outspoken about you know auditions and as an actor, he's he's only done one movie uh, cameo role, uh, Who's My Daddy, with Sans Monsami. So uh, he'll oh, tell yeah. you how sharp it is. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Shrek, Shrek, are you yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Oh, you've been so silent. I, I don't even think you said hello. Sorry, so I was listening. I was listening. Um, my question my is, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> is this from That's the interview, interview that I did with Lovell and Play? Did you check that question from the interview <laughs> I did with Lovell and Play? No, we Google something. <laughs> <Nah>. So, <laughs> okay. You had Google this question. Yeah, I, I uh, Google so, some questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I do see myself very well established in my career and uh, traveling the world a lot. Um, how established? I can't say with complete certainty, but I know I will be established enough to have people see more to our seven than what I portray. Oh, okay, so I have a question. So, since since you've been like uh, in movies and stuff, I'm sure you've have you been recognized, and if you have, how does it feel like being recognized in public and stuff? It feels great and a little bit unexpected because 
when I first did Keeping Up with the Kandis Army, I expected that a very small audience sees it, and from that small audience, it starts to grow that way. That people in the industry will see this movie and it'll grow in a slow motion. The recognition. Yeah, it became. But then huge. when I did this, huge. sorry. Yeah, it it became huge. I can I can imagine like it it was just like because the kind of Sami is it was like for kind of like for a specific audience because like South African Indians are like a different breed to other people yes, in general. Like when it comes to slang and like lifestyle and everything, Absolutely. but it got so huge around the the country. So yeah. Okay, so then basically, when I got the role and everything, when I portrayed the role, I said to myself, "I'll maybe grow from small to big. That's how it'll be." But then, when the movie came out, what surprised me was the amount of recognition I got within the South African industry. That's what surprised me the most because I said to myself, "I'll just do the small movie, and maybe from there I'll grow slowly." But no, it didn't happen that way. It happened in such a way that. So many people with the, not within so only ordinary people, but within the industry, recognize me. So it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of love, I must say, but very very unexpected because I never expected that this movie would grow to the height that it's grown. What you see today, so many people have banners. We have our own like uh, brand, so to speak. Excuse me. I've been to events where there was a birthday cake for Kandis Armies. There's been T-shirts, merchandise for Kandis Armies. We. I don't think any of the cast or any of the crew ever expected that this one movie would end up in the way it ended up. I don't think we ever expected. We expected maybe it'll be huge and good in the sense that it'll be like an average type of movie for every South African to watch. But no, it just it's grown from there. So it does feel yeah. very very wonderful and very very unexpected. Yeah, it's crazy. Like like we even, I mean, the closest interaction we've had with like a Kanda Kanda Sami's cast member, me uh, Shivek and I. Uh, met uh, Prishen from Kandasamis. Um, Madushan. Um, yeah, yeah Madushan. Yes, uh, we met him at we we met him at uh, the temple um, for Shivratri. <laughs> oh, which temple? It was quite funny. We were um, Shivek. Which temple was it? I don't even know. Like, if I have to be. It was. It was at a school. I remember that. But yeah, um, school, yeah. we were standing in line. And like out, of, I was talking to Shivek, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw him there, and I was like, I it I I just thought it was somebody that looked like him, but then I just kept looking over my shoulder, <laughs> and eventually I realized, oh, it's him. So then me uh, Shivek and I went and like sat closer, and like we just kept, kept looking, and then I was like, okay, you go up and say hello, and I'll follow behind you, right? Because we were like. We were like starstruck in a sense, you know, because we didn't know what to do. Because and mm. like eventually, an uncle approached him for us and said we wanted a picture, and we got a picture. And it was really fun. You were such you were so like at the end of the day, you guys are just like normal people, and like you, we just mm. had a conversation. He 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 complimented Shivek's style, and then Shivek was like so happy the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> what what style could he compliment from Shiri? Uh, Sh- Shirek, oh, um, he was Shirek. he was wearing rings yeah. and like just his outfit and everything. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's good to know. Yes, uh, we all get that all the places all the time, and we welcome the love and support. It's good to know that Madhushin was uh, was like that towards you. I mean. Each and every one of us, we do have our moments where we always get recognized all the time, but we take it day by day, time by time. It's very wonderful that how you have gone that way. But don't ever feel scared. I mean, we're just ordinary human beings like y'all. We're just ordinary. There's nothing to be yeah. scared or frightened about in terms of approaching people or approaching celebrities. That's what I always tell people: is that there's nothing scary or anything of the sort in approaching me. Some most of the time when I go out, I also get that. But uh, I try to convince people. You know what? It's not something scary, not something unordinary, because we're all human beings at the end of the day, and nobody's higher, and nobody's lower in terms of who they are. We're all equal in front of everybody. And I remember when I was a small child, um, I was twelve, thirteen years old. I met a few actors. I met. Um, I don't know. If, I don't think y'all will know who she is. Her name is Alicia Ramsundar. Have you heard the name? 
I've heard the name. I've, I, I think I've, I've, heard, I've heard the name. Alicia Ramsander. She took part in the first Broken Promises movie. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. When I was 12 years old, I first met her, and I went up to her and I greeted her. And when I was 13 years old, I met. It was in August 2008. Uh, I met Bollywood actor Vivek Oberoi. He came here for a shooting. Oh, wow. oh that's August. Is on, we, I still remember wish... it because it was it was it was a one of a kind moment for me. Oh, speaking of Bollywood, I wanted mm. to ask: Do you see yourself ever um, working overseas? Yes, definitely. Um, I won't want to say so much right now, but yes, in the near future, I will work. I know for a fact, I will work in. Hollywood and Bollywood because it's it's oh, an achievement it's an ambition if I could come this far what makes you say that I couldn't go as far as there I mean I'm not going to stop my ambitions I love that I love that mentality I would love to see Rashil in in a Bollywood movie that's it <laughs> thank you that would thank be you. amazing that would be which amazing. uh which girl would you like me to see me with opposite oh about that <laughs> <laughs> so But, okay personally Deepika yeah. Deepika. Yeah. Oh, she's she's one of oh, my oh, favorites. Kajal. Yes, she's one of my favorites. I oh, love Kajal. her. She's very very cute. Oh, yes, oh, personally, I, I would say Kajal, Kajal as well. Yeah, same. personally. Kajal. Kajal. Yeah. Well, she's too old for me, sorry. Kajal. <laughs> I know. Like but she, but she, yeah, but you know what they say about Bollywood looks never fade, okay? Absolutely. Looks never sure. fade. Yeah. And just to fully ask you a question, um with regards to uh, you know, um my career and stuff as I was saying earlier on about being human beings uh, so when I went up to Vivek Obroy he was just normal and he was calm and he really really liked me I practically stood right right in front of him and I will not forget that moment because I told myself when I grow up and become an actor I'm going to be just like this guy in the sense that I will be an ordinary human being just like him so I'll never ever see myself as lower or higher to any other person I always had that ambition type of thing And I also met a Bollywood actress Lalit Dubey. If you check my Instagram photos, you will see a picture of that. Yes. So um, at the end of the day, we all human beings. Remember that there's nothing frightening to be about in approaching people. Now back with Bollywood. Thank you so much. Yes, definitely, I will be there, and I would love to be acting with many co-stars. Um, the most ironic thing is I can speak Hindi, and it's a great advantage for me. Oh. That is, I wish I could speak Hindi. I, I I'd like to to learn it someday, like after matric, hopefully <laughs> I can. It's a very beautiful <laughs> language. Once it catches your mouth, you will yeah. feel absolute sweetness in it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, hopefully yeah. one day, one day, me and the boys we're gonna try and do a Hindi movie together yeah. and just make a short film. Just put it out on the <laughs> internet. See what. See I'm gonna what be happens. crying in the rain, and my girlfriend will. Come with me as well, and I'll just be crying there. You know? <laughs> what? What do you mean, your girlfriend? The boys. The boys. The nah, nah, dance geez. in the rain. I want to see. I want a sad scene in this in this movie that we. Oh. You know, sad love scene. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I think I think we we've run out of time, unfortunately. So I just want to say thank you, Rishil, for joining us, and it's Not been a problem. pleasure having you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for oh, yeah, having yeah. me. It's, I'm very, very happy to meet oh, all of y'all, and it's um, actually spoken oh, to all of y'all. Sorry, and um, I would just like to say good luck with all of y'all's um, uh, future careers. Whatever y'all choose to become, become it, and don't let anything get in the way. Because at the end of the day, uh, always know that having an ambition is going to be what's taking you forward. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Yeah, I, again, I just want to say thank you so much for agreeing to this. Like, um, you should have seen our reaction when when you oh, replied to our DM. We were like we were over the moon. We <laughs> yes, I do get a lot of DMs. Yeah. That's for sure. But then recently, with the COVID nineteen and all the, um, if I should say, lockdowns and not doing any work recently, I decided let me just uh, respond to whichever fans. So fans have an opportunity to video call me, to voice call me. I've given that opportunity out now, but I didn't give it out before. Well, that's great. That's why we're, we're honored. We're honored to have you, and yeah, thank you yeah. so much for taking time out of your day for us. Not a problem. You yeah. all take care. If and you have, haven't, stay safe. 
if anybody YouTube. listening hasn't watched the Kandasamis, definitely go watch it. It's amazing. Uh, Rashil has a YouTube channel. I'll put it in this description as well. And don't forget the petitions are also in the description. And I think that's it for Tikka on Lockdown Season 2 Episode 1. So, <laughs> uh, to be yeah, to be thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Goodbye. That, Bye. 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 Bye.